What's up, guys? TGIF, it's Friday, Browns fans. Welcome into another episode of the Barking Browns Show Draft Edition. I'm your host, Jacob, joined by the wonderful Mr. Casey Kinneman from Dog Pound Daily. Man, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How you doing, Jacob? I'm doing wonderful. Um, you know, I just dug into some Senior Bowl stuff uh, for, for Browns Wire, and I'm really excited uh, to have this conversation. We've We've gotten together and had a few conversations, and Really enjoyed talking ball with you before, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, we're, as always, sponsored by our friends over at Homage Apparel. Uh, best in the business, I think, soft, really stylish, relatively affordable. Just keep in mind it's a little bit higher price just because they have to pay the royalties. So if you want te- official team wear, I like, I like shared it the other day, and somebody's like, $38 for a t-shirt. I'm like, yeah, I know. I, you know what? But it's worth it. Like. There's a surcharge for dopeness. Just know that. You know what I mean? It's, it's dope. So you're paying that extra. That is all the there is. Best ad read in the world right there. I love it. So we're going to dive into some edge rushers today. I've got five names. Casey's got five names. And we had this conversation beforehand, so I know that this is true about both of this. Not all of these guys are the top five for the Browns necessarily. They're not all second round picks, that sort of thing. They're guys that could be there somewhere along the way that we think would fit with this roster, especially with the addition of Jim Schwartz. I've like started looking at this stuff now a lot differently when I'm looking at these D tackles and these edge rushers, just because of his, you know, uh, what's the reputation. I couldn't think of the word reputation, his reputation for uh, getting the most out of defensive line play. I was listening to uh, Fran Duffy was sat down, uh, covers the Eagles sat down with Jake Burns at a podcast uh, I listened to today and was talking about like he Schwartz has got immense amount of production out of edge rushers, but he's never had a talent like Miles Garrett. And so it's like, okay, I like it. Like, I like that. So we're going to do it. We got five names. Casey, you're up first, man. Hit me with your first one. All right. Preface. This is mm-hmm. my fingers crossed. Let's hope other GMs overthink this prospect. Yep. Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. Lucas Van Ness is 6'5", 275. If you were to draw a prototype for an edge defender, this is the dude. Now, he's 21 years old. He fits all the age parameters. Mm. He didn't grow up playing football. This is a hockey player. He just started playing football. He's a redshirt sophomore. And what I find most impressive is his redshirt freshman year played strictly defensive tackle. Yeah. (laughs) Did, Did tremendous. Had like eight tackles for loss, seven sacks, just, just a, he is mutant strong when you watch him play. It's his leverage, his posture, everything's perfect. Well, this spring he transitioned and he played edge this year. Mm-hmm. Now he had 10 and a half tackles for loss and I think uh, six sacks. Where are we, what they got to hope is someone overthinks this. And mm-hmm. I will just say this one sentence. He never started a game in college, yeah. not one. Now that might be if if two if two scouts come to a GM and they're like jockeying for position with guys, if the GM hears that sentence, that might that might sway something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they just if just hope that he just slips to forty two, or they might have to trade up to get him. But this kid is tremendous length. He's what you draw up if you watch his tape against Ohio State. Yep. Got plenty of reps against Dewan Jones and Paris, and then his tape against Goronsky, like. This dude is, he's ready to go, man. Take this dude out the box, get him on the field. Now he's raw because he's, he's only had like 490 reps. Yep. You know what I mean? So he he still has a lot of growing to do, but you can't get a better prototype than this kid. So Lucas Van Ness round two, cross your fingers. Hey, I've got Lucas Van Ness firmly up at the top of this list as well, man. I mean, I wrote it down and I love the way I just put it in my notes. One word, powerful. Like this, oh, dude, there is a re- a couple of reps where he just just bullies tackles right into the quarterback, and you're just like, and he did play some interior this year too, just not a whole lot of it, and but he's he's definitely way better on the outside. I think he's way better on the outside. But he's that you said it prototypical. It reminds you of Alex Wright's kind of inside outside flexibility and kind of tools, um, and he's just got a great motor. Like I just, he doesn't care if he's starting. He doesn't care if the pass rush lasts eight seconds, you know, like the dude is going to work his tail off. He's just big. He's strong. And like, there's a little bit of wiggle in those hips. That's like, 
oh, he's going to rely really heavily on that bull rush. But every once in a while, he does a little inside swim move and he just right to the quarterback. And you're just like, okay, all right. There's no reason he should be there at 42. Uh, Although I will say that a lot of simulators, I have found him there. So what does that mean? I don't know. But like JOK and Greg Newsom never lasted to 26. (laughs) <laughs> and then we know how that went. So maybe we could get lucky, man. I think we could get lucky or we could slide up. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm right with you. I'm Lucas Van Ness right at the top of that list. And I really, I think you said most of it. I think that's all we can say about it. Yeah, he's he earned the nickname of Hercules. Yep. When, you're, when your teammates call you Hercules, there's a reason. You know, you got to earn that. That didn't just get bestowed upon him. He is, he's dumb, strong, and he's only <laughs> going to get better. Like I said, 490 reps in college really hasn't been playing the sport that long. And if you can get in a room with, you know, someone like Miles to kind of bounce things off of, and and now with the DC coming in Schwartz, like I think there's room for this kid to, to be something special in the league. I absolutely agree, man. Absolutely. Hit me with number or number two, number four, whatever, it, whatever it is. All right, this is my third round. I think he'll be there. Now mm-hmm. this isn't your typical Jim Schwartz size guy. Mm-hmm. Derek Hall, Auburn. Oh. 6'3", 256, crazy athlete. I mean, they drop this dude into coverage sometimes, but like yeah. when you just look at him, he's 21 years old too, so he's still in that parameter where you know they take a flyer on him for sure. But tenacious, he has really good bend. And he is he is all he flies. His tape was real fun to watch. Super aggressive. Uh ton of production in college, 29 and a half sacks, 24 of which came over his last two years. You know, and he had uh I think 11 one year and 13 the next, you know, he's, he's all over the tape. You watch Auburn play, man. He's, he was definitely the preeminent uh, pass rusher on the team. And like I said, they moved him around, man. Like you could see, you, they drop him into coverage without, without hesitation. And he made plays even back there. Crazy good athlete. He doesn't have that typical, when you look at Jim Schwartz's edges though, they're heavier usually. Yeah. He doesn't fit that mold as of yet. He's, and I don't know if he's really six, three, just being real watching the tape. He might be that six, two and a quarter, yeah. You know what I mean? So we'll see how he measures out, but he, I, I guarantee you his metrics when he tests are going to be off, off the charts, man. He's, he's a crazy yeah. athlete. So I just, <laughs> I'll, I'll say I had Derek Hall on my list too. So, so I'll, I'll give my Derek Hall and then I'll give another one. I'll go first on the next round. So maybe that you're repeating after me. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Listen, I just watched a whole mess of Derek Hall last night. Like I, he was someone that kept coming up in my simulations, but I just hadn't gotten to watching any of his tape. I watched like three games. And the first one I watched was Alabama. Anytime I see some tape that, you know, going up against a team like Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State, some situations like that, good te- teams that have really good physical offensive lines, I want to go see what they did. He's just so explosive. Like there's some plays off the line of scrimmage where he's – going up against strong athletic tackles, like like tackles that are going to play on Sunday, and he blows right by him. I mean, he just he's a, such a sudden athlete off the line of scrimmage, and you're just like, oh, oh, this is what we're doing. <laughs> like, I, what I got to say, what hurts him, why he is, I agree with you, third round range, somewhere in there. I, his hands are so inconsistent. He frustrates the hell out of me because I'm like, he lets linemen get into his body and kind of direct him sometimes. And I'm like, you stop, stop doing that. You have all these physical tools, the size, the length, the, the, he has more power than people think he does. He'll show flashes of that. He's just really kind of raw, but it's like, you can stop letting people like just bully you a little bit. I think we'll be okay. We didn't watch this tape together, but uh, what I wrote was, must disengage. There yes. So many times where he was just locked up and that was the end of it. It's like, there was no swipes, no hands fighting when he acquiesced a couple times where mm-hmm. I was just like, Oh man. Cause he, with his kind of motor, man, he needs a better plan B is what I, what I kind of look at a player like him when his plan A didn't work. He really didn't have a, something to pivot off of a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's a perfect, perfectly put there. Okay, here's my guy that I'm with kind of similar to Lucas Van Ness where I think he has no business being there at 42, but we've seen people overthink things before. Trayvon Walker going number one overall is the first to my mind. Don't get me wrong. I'm not as hard on Trayvon Walker as some people are. I 
I think he's a good player, but I'm just, my point is you could see this. We saw this happening with his brother and that's BJ Ojolari from LSU. Aziz was my edge one in that class. He ends up going in the second round. I think BJ Ojolari, you know, behind Will Anderson and, you know, the guys up at the very, very top, Miles Murphy, you know, he's got to be, I don't think he can be worse than edge four. He's probably somewhere around edge three or four, but there's some inconsistencies early that I think might lead to him falling a little bit. He's really long. He's really tall. Again, you're going to start talking about these things that make sense for what Jim Schwartz likes to do. He's a real smooth athlete, real, real accelerating. Uh, he's got some bend, some really nice bend, not quite as much as Aziz has, but you know, I think he's probably got, I actually think he's got higher uh, ceiling, the lower floor, higher ceiling than, than his brother did or does. Um, his first step's really nice. He's stronger than you would think. I wrote this down specifically because I really liked it. There's a couple reps against Ole Miss where he literally got a hold of the left left tackle, and he did that thing that we watched Malik McDowell do in the preseason where he just, like, shoved dudes into quarterbacks. And B.J. Ocelari did it. And it's not – I, when I watch his tape and you think about him, you think of an athlete. You don't think of this big, strong – you don't think of Lucas Van Ness. They're not the same thing, but I'm just saying there's some of that traits to it. And I just think P.J. Ozolari, like, there's – it needs some refinement, but that dude, he's got the, – the sky's the limit for him. Yeah, when I watch him, he doesn't seem as polished, but as from an athletic blueprint standard, I, I mean, that he's a freak. You know, yeah. he's a freak out there is uh, like you said, his ability to convert explosion to power when you wouldn't think he would have it because of his build. He doesn't look like he's that kind of guy, but you can see it at the point of impact. He, and he's a finisher. Yep. He's a finisher when it comes down to closing, you know what I mean? He, he'll get to the ball. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't, I don't think he'll be there, but <laughs> if he were to fall in your lap, you couldn't be mad at it. No, not at all. All right. Ready for my third. I'm ready. All right, here, here it is. So I do this to myself. I, I'm, I get romantic with players. And last last year it was – and I this is my white whale, and I knew there was a less than 0% chance that Andrew Barry would ever say his name, but it was Jelani Woods. Mm-hmm. I love Jelani Woods' tape. Yeah. I loved everything about him, I think. And I get it. He's old. He's an yeah. old player. So, it, you know, well, I did it again, man. I did it again with this – looking at the edges. Will McDonald the fourth out of Iowa State. His tape is the funnest tape I've seen. It's so fun to watch. He's on fire out there, man. He, he might be the most tenacious player in this draft, dude. He, When I say gets after it, I mean it is something to behold. And when I talk about a finisher, that dude is amazing. If you if you ever get bored, just look at yeah. the play against when he played against Texas last year. Keontae Ingram goes to make a block, and I mean he goes to cut him, and it there's he had nothing for him, man. Will McDonald's athleticism. Now the, he does have a double ARP card. He's he's twenty he's twenty three right now. He's gonna be twenty four, I think, in in June. So Ooh. he's that guy. But I'm just saying, he's someone's gonna pick him in the third round. Someone yeah. he's his tape is that ridiculous. Someone is if you're ready to win now and you want to mm-hmm. drop him in. Now again, this isn't a typical Jim Schwartz. Two this dude's two hundred forty five pounds. He's six four, maybe. I mean, but at twenty four years old. How much filling out is he going to do? You know mm, what I mean? I, I don't, I probably not much. This probably isn't a guy that can ultimately end up on the Browns unless something crazy happens, but it was the funnest tape I had. I had to put him on my list, man. He's so much fun to watch. I recommend it for anyone out there. Will McDonald, the fourth Iowa state. I will go and watch some of his tape. I'll admit that the age is the only reason I have it. Yeah. Like, but I mean, I've read some scouting reports from people saying exactly what you're saying. You know, hey, it's a lot of fun. Go check it out if you're having a good time. It's like, you know, I'm getting there too because, like, I do a lot of my most pretty much all of the stuff I do is is Brown centric when it comes to that. But I have started to branch out a little bit, and so I just like to watch good football players foot play football at this point. You know, it's like. Let's have fun. All right. My, my fourth guy here. Um, this is a, this is okay. So this is my number one target in terms of who I realistically think can be there at 42 and is worthy of that pick. Should he be there? Almost makes him like the ideal edge. Number one for, for the Browns, just strictly from that standpoint. And that's Felix. Anu- oh man, here we go. 
Anudike Uzama. There we go. The, the product from K-State. And I just thought that this was one of the more well-rounded players that I, that I watched. He has a really strong base and he just like, he reminds you on some of the, some of the similar things that Clowney did last year against the run when it comes to setting the edge on the outside. He doesn't really get moved. It doesn't, he's not quite as Clowney had a, a a knack for making the tackle for loss, whereas Uzama more so just limits the explosive runs, I think, at least at this point. Um, He's got a really, really nice swim move. I mean, he ducks inside, just inside, under, gone. He's there. He wins with athleticism and power. He will switch between the two just like it's a light switch, just back and forth, back and forth. 21 years old, 6'4", 256 pounds. So still, again, a little bit lighter for what Jim Schwartz likes. 11 and a half sacks two years ago, eight and a half sacks this year. He was the Big, Ten, he was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in 2022. Uh, six forced fumbles in 2021, and he had two more this year. He's got a knack. He, he kind of reminds you a little bit about um, David Ojabo. When I remember scouting Ojabo last year was – all Ojabo did was go at the ball. He didn't even go at quarterbacks. And at times, that's what Uzama will do. He attacks it. He's got that peanut, peanut Tillman punch where he does it in the run game as well. He likes to force big plays. Um, I just think he's got lots of room for – he has lots of room for improvement. He has a, such a high ceiling where he's got the just the knack to – I think he could even add even more size. I think he could add more size because he has the ability to win with power. And I think he's athletic enough that if he added some size that he would be able to still move around with it. He's not Miles Garrett level bendy around the edge, but like I've got this thing for these types of players. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> I haven't done any study on him yet. I did see some Kansas State when I was watching Will McDonald. So mm. I, I got to see some in passing, but I haven't actually deep dove into him yet. He's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch. Okay, for me, now we're on to day three. Mm-hmm. I got two picks here that'll that'll be day three picks, and both because they're older prospects, but both of these players fit what Schwartz does. These these are both prototypical giants with with the weight the height the measurement everything you're looking for my first one yaya diaby out of louisville yaya diaby's six foot four 270 pounds he's a straight up bully i mean he is one of those engage and then separate like he just like Mm -hmm. gets his arms extended and then he has his way with people it's he is a very physical football player nine sacks last year um, I saw a stat on him that I need to see measured before I'll believe it. They're saying he has an eight foot wingspan. Ooh. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I need to see it before I can co-sign to that. But like it, on tape, it looks it looks freakish. You know, Yaya yep. Diaby. He, he's someone to watch. Um, Twenty three years old. I think you know. I think he's going to slip to around six, probably somewhere in that in that realm. But he's he's that prototypical size, and he he's ready to go. He was a JUCO transfer, uh, not a huge name. Louisville it didn't really wow people, so a lot of people were were hip to him. But I, after just watching his tape, man, Yaya Diaby is someone I have my eye on, and I would not mind to see him in Cleveland next year. I'll have to go check that out. That's not a name that I've done really any work on yet, so I'll have to I'll have to check it out. My last guy, uh, I, I I like it. I, preface that the one guy that was very close to making this list was Andre Carter from army, but there's some uh, situations with his age and with they're they're talking about passing this bill that will allow him to play, but until it's a hundred percent passed, yeah. you, listen, I was in the army. I understand how long those things take to make their way through the government. So like I've been there. So he was close to this list. I'm going to take a guy that will probably be day three and it's not because of his talent. And that's Brenton Cox jr. From Florida. This dude has all the talent in the world. He's been dismissed from two programs. So that's why he's probably like, I think most places have him in like the two hundreds, two fifties, somewhere in there. But you look at this guy, he going into this season before he throws a punch and gets uh, thrown off the team in Florida was considered a top 50 prospect. Like a lot of people were like, Hey, this is it. Like he gets, I can't remember. It was some kind of, there was an arrest that got him kicked off of Georgia. 
I can't, I, I had it there. And then he like throws a punch in the end zone out, uh, in Florida was like, you're out of here, you know, and he's, he's gone dismissed from that program. But like the dude is, uh, he's prototypical edge rusher, six, four, two fifty, strong. Uh, he's very productive as a run defender. He's not, he didn't really have the sack production that you wanted. Uh, and he mainly because he doesn't have a lot of, uh, moves he's really raw and undeveloped especially for a guy that was a senior well that has a lot to do with being kicked off of two teams but the dude's got the strength he's got the size he's got the instincts i think he can be a three down player because he can stop the run and has you know the skills to be a pass rusher and you know i wouldn't have thought this a couple of years ago but then you get malik mcdowell you get Deshaun Watson. You're starting to see a, a situation where the t- the Browns are offering people not just second chances, but third and fourth and fifth and twenty uh, seventh chances, and, and you know things like that. They're they're willing to if they think that this person has talent and they are past it because I do. I think that when they've taken these chances, I think they think, well, this person's not going to do it again. I mean that kind of thing. And I think that Britton Cox has enough talent that if they sit down and feel comfortable with him as a person, it's not the player that you wouldn't want to draft. It's the person. And and they've shown a propensity to be willing to listen. Yeah. If they think your ceiling is, is legitimately high, they'll, they'll take a flyer, you know, they'll, and if you look at like McDowell, I was completely on board with that, man. Like, Mm -hmm. Even after his rookie year, I was like, man, this kid hadn't played in five years, and look what he was able to do. Not that he was, like, balling out by any means, but, like, it was only, like, man, his next year could have been great. You know, then he yeah. gets buck naked and, and then, you know, gets goes back to prison, so. That was the but, wildest. That was a, Listen, of a wild offseason, that was one of the wildest things that happened. Yeah, didn't get talked about because of everything else, but I'll yeah. tell you what, man, it was – yeah, but but he but he had that blueprint, like you said, man. They're they're willing to take chances if you're that that level of an athlete with that kind of a ceiling, and they think it's behind you. Now they could be wrong, but you know if if he's available, you know in the sixth round, and yeah, hey, why not, man? Why not? That's that's where I'm taking him. I'm not taking him before six or seven, but you know, well, I got one more. Let's go for and it. And I'm going to mess this name all up. <laughs> Habakkuk Baldonado. Pittsburgh edge defender. Sounds I'm telling right. you, man, this is the size. This dude is 6'5, 275. No bend, edge setter, great eyes, forces everything inside. Uh, like I said, he, he could get, if he's in space, he's not going to look good. But mm-hmm. this dude is, he's, he's legit. He's, he's the size, he's the strength. I've seen him on some big boards a lot higher than this, but I think he's going to be available sixth, seventh round. But like I said, six six five two seventy five. He's just that prototypical size guy, almost like an Isaiah Thomas. You know what I mean? I think that okay. same level of athlete. He's not no not not a bendy guy, but he's, he he plays hard. He plays through the whistle. He doesn't have a good feel for double teams. He's from Italy, actually. Wow. Oh. Um, and uh, he had nine sacks as a junior. He only had two as a senior. So his stock is definitely fell but he see he has put it on tape to where he yeah. can get to the quarterback this year just didn't work out for him he missed three games due to injury he had uh, i think 25 tackles five tackles for loss two sacks he blocked a kick like he's 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 a guy that you might want to take a flyer on if he comes available you know and i i would be feel comfortable in the seventh round but habakkuk ball donato there we go listen this is another draft with a lot of good names the g there's a uh, I always love good names in the draft. Uh, there was a there's a corner uh, for North Carolina. And his name is Storm Duck. It's a fantastic name. That's that where this episode's. That, that's where we're ending this episode. <laughs> well, I was watching Derek Hall just getting reminded of a Smoke Monday. So now we have a, yes. s- a Storm Duck. Smoke Monday his was name? my favorite yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Smoke Monday. Now we've got a Storm Duck. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know what's next. You know what I mean? I'm going to do it next. <laughs> I'm ready. Sign me up for it next year. All right, man. I appreciate the hell out of you taking your time over here. So real quick before we uh, jump off this, just let everybody know where they can find you. You can uh, read read my uh, 
dribblings over at Dog Pound Daily, you know, when I decided to turn an article. Sorry, Randy. And uh, <laughs> you can catch me on uh, Sports for CLE about once a week. Uh, odd times. Whenever they ask me, I just I just show up and say some nonsense into a mic. But that's where you can catch me. Okay. That's what I, I talk nonsense into a mic every day. So it's, you know, it's, it's a great living. All right, guys, we appreciate the hell out of you. Um, we will be back next Friday. Uh, I think we're going back to, I think we're going to tight ends for next Friday's draft episode. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go with that, but you know what? Like we're getting there. We got a senior bowl preview coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, senior bowl is just a few weeks away. So be ready for that. I, I was like, the, the game's on the 4th of February, so the the week preceding that, so it's two weeks away. Um, not even a week and a half they, the Senior Bowl starts, so the draft's full underway. If you guys got comments, uh, prospects you want to want discussed on these episodes, just you know, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter at Roaches13, or you can uh, comment in the description down below. Um, we appreciate you guys. Talk to you guys again soon. Go Browns.